You ready for this? <laughs> what? You seriously gonna, gonna, oh, gonna make? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna do it. Ready? Flex plates today. You ready? You ready? Uh -huh. Today we're talking about flex plates. Do you even flex, bro? Today we're talking about flex plates. Stalkers, stock flex plates, billet flex plates, roid rage flex plates. <laughs> Okay guys, today we're actually talking about flex plates, why you need to upgrade them, what fails on them, and uh, what options are out there. This is a stock flex plate. 48RE, 47RE, 47RH, they're all essentially the same. They look the same, construction's the same. They all fail right about 500 horsepower. Yeah. What fails, Dustin? Oh, the center rips out. So right, right around, here? Yeah, right around where the crank bolts up to it it'll just rip it right out. It'll start cracking prematurely usually and then it'll just completely spin it out. And usually they'll have this uh, spacer plate on there. We have guys ask us all the time when we get an aftermarket plate sold to them and they say, well, what should I do with the ring? Well, some guys put them in, but we like a little bit more thread engagement, so we don't recommend putting this on with it. In a race application, we don't like this either with the billet one because this makes the bolts on the that hold the flex plate to the crank taller, which means you have less room for the torque converter to swell before it has a chance of touching the heads of the bolts. So also in performance application, I don't like this beauty ring either. So the answer is just don't reuse it. Yeah, sounds good to me. So what, uh, what are the three flex plates we've got sitting here? Okay, so we have this heavy duty SFI rated. This is a stamp steel flex plate. It's about twice as thick as stock. We've ran these all the way up to 1400 horsepower and never torn out the center. The downside is these are a cheaper made flex plate and uh, their centering tabs are like the stock where they have four tabs that centered on the crank, just like a stock flex plate. The problem is if you're not careful or if these tabs aren't perfectly bent from the manufacturer, uh, it's easy to get your flex plate a little bit crooked. And uh, so you just have to be a little extra careful installing this, but this is definitely the budget friendly, affordable version. So what happens if you don't get those tabs lined up just right when you install it? Your torque converter no longer runs true because your torque converter centers on this, which should be centered on the center of the crank. Now it wipes out the bushing in the, the pump bushing and sometimes the uh, stator support will rub. Long story short, your transmission doesn't last very long. Yeah, you'll have to be pulling it out very soon after that. Usually a leaky seal, you'll start to have a bunch of ATF puke out and that'll be the first sign that you'll have. Vibration is another telltale sign. You didn't get it straight, right? When you first start your truck up, new tranny, we get that angry call, hey, my new power driven tranny's vibrating. Usually, what, nine out of 10 times, flex plate didn't get installed straight. Yeah. So if you are the guy that likes to hammer your flex plate on, hammer at home, you don't spend any time checking to make sure your work is straight, get one of these more expensive ones because they're idiot proof. Okay, so the only other reason you would upgrade a flex plate is for this SFI rating. If you're going to drag race, you go quicker than uh, 1199, you need an SFI rated flex plate. These are SFI rated 29.1. Um, that's the first rating. They also have a 29.3 rating. Long story short, all you need is a 29.1 rating. Some of the more expensive ones paid SFI the extra money to have a 29.3 rating which was a made up SFI rating for diesels for drag racing so that certain manufacturers could try to control the market and it backfired because SFI never came around and mandated 29.3 was required for diesel racing. So standard 29.1 rating is required, which is standard for any of the gas racing classes as well. And uh, long story short, if you drag race, they're gonna want the number off your sticker to know that you've upgraded this. All that is, is means this has been spun up to a certain RPM. I think it's like 8,000 RPM and it was stable and didn't come apart in hopes that this will not come apart when you're drag racing at high RPM and cut your legs off. Yeah, that would not be fun. So that's really what it's about is a stability RPM rating, which on these, this really has to do with how well it's welded here because this heavy center plate's not coming apart. 
So this is a, you just mentioned it's welded here. So this ring gear's welded, right? And this is a punched out standard centerpiece. So it's a stamped steel centerpiece with a welded ring gear on it. So that's our HD. And then what is this black one here? So this is our billet one. Um, the ring gear, this is machined out of a solid piece. So tell us about the ring gear on this one. Yeah, as you can see, there's, there's no welds here. And it's obviously one big machine piece. It's very smooth, very nice finish. This stamped out steel one, sometimes you can see there's a little bit of ridge here. It looks a lot nicer. Is it required? Well, when you get up into the higher horsepower ranges, a lot of guys like them because they're going to stay So like on our there. UCC truck, we always run this type of flex plate. On my junker drag truck, I run this. My daily driver, I run this. 99% of performance transmission guys, they run this. Why? Because this is a sub $200 flex plate and that is a $300 plus dollar flex plate. And really, it's just a, a price thing. So you can save that money and put it into your turbos if you'd like. Or that billet intermediate shaft you're looking well, at. Well, let's talk about the install ring, though. See this back ring? Big ring, centers on the crank. This one has the four tabs. This one's idiot proof. This one, you got to be a little more careful on the install. Flipping around to this side, billet one's got that machine center. This one's just flat, so the billet one has a, you know, they've got a, a machined depth you know, to make the torque converter line up with uh, the bolts better. This one, it's just kind of flexes its way in there. So this one kind of is a more exact fitment on your torque converter to crank distance. This one kind of, you know, flexes a little bit. <laughs> Hence the term. Flex plate. And so this would be our last one. This one's very similar to this one. It is another billet, but it is a 12 hole. A lot of guys, you have an issue when you start getting these higher RPM, higher horsepower trucks, the torque converter bolts will come loose. And when they come loose and you run it for any amount of time, you generally waller these holes out and make them egg shaped. Well, from that point on, the torque converter is never going to stay tight. Once those bolts can wiggle a little bit, they're just going to keep doing it. So we like these 12 bolt ones. We also have a 12 bolt torque converter. You can go ahead and install all 12 bolts or you can put in six. And if it ever does come loose, you can still reuse your flex plate because you can move it to the next six hole bolt pattern, which is a big improvement. So it's nice to have both. Uh, from a service and repair standpoint, shops hate 12 volt because it takes twice as long to unbolt the torque converter if they're working on your transmission. But from a racing application, the 12 is there. We've actually never had trouble shearing bolts off. I know some of the uh, 48 swapped into Duramaxes have that trouble, and I don't know if it's a harmonic or a, uh, a stack of tolerance problems, but those, I've seen a lot of Duramax powered trucks that are equipped with the Dodge Tranny shear bolts and that's you know they always go to the 12. We've never had a horsepower bolt shearing problem. It's always been they'll loosen up and it's almost always on high RPM trucks. My street truck has a hundred thousand miles on this flex plate. It stayed tight. It just has blue Loctite. I didn't put red or anything crazy. Some of the race trucks were putting red Loctite and stuff in them because like I said like Todd's truck you know we take it up to 6500 RPM and you know, <laughs> it starts to rattle noise. and you go, what's that noise? Oh, well, torque converter bolts came loose again. And so even in Todd's race truck, GT, we run six bolts. They don't shear off. We haven't had that problem yet is what you're getting at, right? Yeah, we haven't had any problem with shearing bolts from power. So. Even in that big truck, even on the sled pole and everything. Yeah, it's been it's so. been holding up. Um, this this one uh, has a welded ring gear, so it's, a, it's an affordable 12 bolt, um, but it is still a, a billet machine center section. It just has a ring gear that's fully welded on that one too yeah not stamped this one's a stamped it's still a machine center but and, and it has stamped, the same locating ring this stamped this one, one just has a couple weld patches you know it's not continuous welded just just some minor differences but at the end of the day this one is the affordable version that most guys choose and holds up great there's different variations some have six holes instead of four windows here some have eight but the main thing is it's way thicker there is one other option I guess we could talk about. Back in the day, guys used to cut the center out of a stock flex plate and cut the ring off it and double it up. So just where it bolts to the crank and the torque converter was doubled. They didn't even have to be welded. Just the bolts could hold them together. And that was called like a laminated flex plate. That was the budget option before this became readily imported from China. And uh, <laughs> when you say guys, I know exactly which guys <laughs> <laughs> I used to run around on the junker drag truck and it held fine. It never broke. But um, well, that's the whole point of that truck, right? Yeah, it was it was it was Budget. cheap. 
Yeah. But now these are so affordable that it's like, it's not worth your time to mess with stock flex plates. Just throw them away and, and upgrade them. And like I said, if you are going to a billet input shaft, in my opinion, always do a flex plate. Because what's the point of getting the strength of a billet input shaft and having that weak link, weak link? To me, usually a stock input and that flex plate break right about the same power level. So if you upgrade one and the other, you're kind of just wasting your time. Now, if your starter ring gear is chewed up and you got dead spots on your, you know, on your flex plate there for the starter, then we have had some stock truck guys upgrade to this because this is cheaper than a new Mopar flex plate. But cut to short, that's all you need to know about flex plates. Yep, pretty basic, straightforward. Really, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Remember to uh, you know follow our channel, like, subscribe. We're doing some cool work with some other YouTube collaborators, creators. So uh, so check out their channel too. I mean, we might be doing a little bit of stuff with Cleese McFarland. So stay tuned because. Uh, that galaxy is going to rip when we're done with it. <laughs>